So the first part we're going to touch on is the different oscillator shapes. In 3 oscillator, you have all your basic waveforms. You have in 3 oscillator, you have 3 uh, as the name was just, you have 3 different oscillators to work from. So for you new guys, each of these is the exact same as the other. So if you learn, let's say, oscillator number 1, you've learned oscillator number 2 and 3. It's only a little difference is that 2 and 3 have a volume automation knob. You can turn them up and down in context of the oscillator, whereas number one can't adjust that. But other than that, each one of these is the exact same. So we'll go about learning just number one. And once you've learned number one, you've learned all number two and number three likewise. So first off, uh, we'll go over our basic sine wave. This is the most harmonically pure sound. It's always just the fundamental. And it sounds like this. Uh, you may have heard the sound from when uh, radio broadcasters or TV representatives want to bleep out somebody swearing. It's, I think it had like a 100 hertz tone. I'm not sure if I can play for you. But yeah, that's the general sound that they used to bleep out. It's your basic sound. Um, you can make some pretty good stuff with this, especially if you distort it. Um, or you can get some really organy flute type sounds if you use this. So that's the first waveform we use here. Second one, it's a typical Squire wave. Tend to find this sound a lot in Future House, so if you went to your ADSR, uh, you automate a lot of the volume or cut off things, you get kind of the really plucky thing. This is the foundation for a lot of the sounds you hear here. Next one is a pulse wave, or it's a form of a pulse wave. So what you hear here, the square wave, this pulse wave, it's just when you're looking at a square wave and it's um, half up, you're looking at the automation, so it's going up half for half the time, and then goes down for half the time. Pulse waves, instead of doing splitting the up and down um, modulation, where the amplitude's ab above zero and below zero for half the time, pulse wave, it's, let's say, I think for this one, it's above zero uh, for a quarter of the time and below it for 75% of the time. So it gives it a really interesting, uh, almost saw-like sound. It still kind of ha has a unique flavor to it. So that's what this one is. This one we'll go over shortly. This is actually custom waveforms. So this will drag in waveforms into here, and then this will play that. I'll show you guys how to do that in the coming video. I'm not going to touch on that right now. Next one is a triangle wave. Sounds almost like the sine wave. As you've got some sharper peaks, you can start to get a little bit more of those upper harmonics coming in. So if you're looking for something pure, not super, super pure, triangle one's the greatest. Finally, we have our saw wave. The most harmonically rich waveform of them all. It's a favorite from everything from trance artists to, I know, Flux Pavilion in many of his interviews has sung the praises of just almost always going to the saw wave. It's a great little one. I use it a lot in my productions. In fact, almost exclusively a lot of the times. So you can become great friends with this in the future if you haven't already. Finally, this is your white noise. Not sure why they put it as a dice, <laughs> but you know, if you're looking to make some super saw sort of sounds, you know, you want to give it a nice top end, you can take a little saw, put a little white noise here. This is a nice fuzzy top edge. This knob here, not a waveform instead it inverts the phase of it so for from pretty much all of these it's not gonna make any difference uh, the pulse wave because it's starting earlier and ending later uh it's starting early going up for like let's say a quarter of the way and then coming down below the zero point and playing below that for about 75 percent of the time instead reverses the polarity uh so that instead it plays above it 75% of the time goes below. So to be honest, I don't usually notice it a whole lot when it's by itself. It's maybe when you're combining it with other sounds, where if you reverse the polarity, uh, it'll give it a slightly different timbre difference, but it's very, very, very hard to notice, to be honest. So I rarely use it, but that's an option if that's your thing. So those are all the basic waveforms. We'll get into the custom one shortly. For now, we'll go over the rest of our oscillator options.